Spider-Man 2, the extended version. I have never seen the theatrical, and this is my first time seeing the extended. Uh, so yeah, I've never seen Spider-Man 2 before, but it's also kind of called Spider-Man 2.1, and it just has a bunch of like extended fight sequences and stuff, as it says on the back here. So typically, uh, I always go for the extended version. Not all the time, but most of the time, just because I'd rather absorb all the content I can. Um, and there were definitely some stuff I would have cut from it, but I, I signed up to watch the extended stuff, so I'm not going to complain about that. But I still have stuff to complain about. Um, I think this movie is definitely better than the first one, but I had extremely high expectations because I've been told by people that it's like the greatest Marvel movie ever made. So I kind of expected it to be good, but honestly I thought it was pretty mediocre. I think it suffered a lot of the same problems the first one did. I think it did some things better but it also had the exact same problems as the previous one because it is the same director and everything and the same vision so it makes sense that there's the same problems. Um, so yeah, uh, Peter Parker this time is... he has a very sad life. He's living alone. Um, he's kind of living on the brink of poverty. He's getting fired from jobs very frequently. Um, he's still obsessed with MJ who is again maid hopping a lot. Uh, he's got this, some new possible like husband, uh, uh, Jameson's uh, son basically, John Jameson, he's like this astronaut. I mean, think of MJ's options here. She's got, you know, the billionaire, um, the billionaire Harry Osborn, she's got the superhero Peter Parker, and now she's got this astronaut guy. So, MJ man, I would make this exact same criticism if it was a man for the record, but like, it is ten times more stereotypical when a female character is doing this. Just the maid hopping in general, I better not see it in the third movie because that, that's going to really, that's going to rub me the wrong way if she uh, ends up with Harry in the third movie or something stupid like that, so that better not happen. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, Peter is living a very sad, relatable life. I'm sure a lot of people can, are able to relate to him. He's uh, struggling with balancing the adulthood responsibilities with the superhero responsibilities, and he basically is trying to kind of retire from being Spider-Man. Um, but of course that's not going to happen because then we wouldn't have a franchise and this is a very franchisable character. Uh, and then eventually he's uh, writing a paper for university on this brilliant guy, scientist named Dr. Octo, or is it Otto? Dr. Otto Octavius. And uh, Otto basically is working with Harry Osborn, who's now like the CEO of the company and everything. Um, Harry's still pissed off at Spider-Man for murdering his father, even though his father was pretty, you know pretty off the deep end, so, um, but, uh, yeah, so, the, Otto does a live demonstration with his new technology, he's got these octopus arm things, and, uh, they, they have AI minds of their own, and the only thing stopping the AI from taking over is this, like, inhibitor on his neck, and, of course, that goes wrong, and the neck is, thing is broken off, and then the AI basically takes over and gives in to his more, it's a little unexplained, but I guess it's more primal urges for greatness and stuff. So he's going to do his original plan he wanted to do because now he doesn't feel too responsible. He doesn't feel too morally obligated, I guess, to test longer and stuff. It's actually a little unclear what the plan is, but the important part is that it is potentially world-ending. There's this weird plasma fire thing. So I wouldn't think about it too much because it's not really explained to you. Just it's world-ending. Spider-Man needs to stop it. Okay, um, so the good of this movie. So I like Peter's sad and relatable life. Um, maybe it goes on for a little long, but that's probably just because I'm watching the extended version. Um, but I still thought it was pretty relatable. I, you know, I was like, damn. You know, it made, it made Peter way more likable, basically, because not everything's going perfect for him all the time, like it typically does for superheroes. Uh, I also liked the, the villain was better, even though he was a little unexplained and uh, very underdeveloped compared to Marvel's uh, Spider-Man game, which I keep bringing up every single time I talk about Spider-Man because that game is just so damn good. Um, so I definitely prefer the Octavius in the game, but this one was pretty good too. Um, Rosemary Harris, I believe. And I'm, I'm watching this trilogy for the first time now because, uh, you know, of the, the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer, basically. And I feel like it will be way more epic if I've seen these original ones first. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, the thing with Octavius, even though he wasn't super developed or anything, you kind of got a hint for who he is just off of the brief times he's speaking with Peter. 
Um, I liked uh, his you know, very small, um, very quickly done relationship with his wife. I forget her name. She is very brief. She does not appear many times. Um, but it provides more motivation. It gives him just a little bit of depth in such a short run time. It does give him a little bit of depth. Um, I actually don't know what the runtime is, but it felt really quick. This movie did feel like it was going by quickly, even though it was extended, which is a good thing. That means it had good, decent enough pacing. Um, but it just gave Dr. O Octopus, Dr. O Doc Ocko, just a little bit of more depth, a little bit more motivation. I especially like the climax and what ha ultimately happens to his character and everything. Uh, I think the action is way better in this movie, too. Uh, basically, they didn't spare a single penny. It looks epic. I love that train scene. I love every time his mask comes off because sometimes there's some consequences to that. On that note, how does nobody realize who he is? I mean, anyone with half a brain in either Harry or MJ's position would immediately know that uh, Spider-Man is Peter Parker. Like, immediately. Peter doesn't have a Batman voice, you know. He's always at the right place at the right time. It's, it's so obvious. That, that actually kind of like... It was super obvious this time. It's like that in every single Spider-Man movie ever. But in this one in particular, I was like, come on, guys. You know. Like, there was a specific kiss scene in the last movie that, like, MJ goes, oh, and it's like, come on, guys, you've got to know who, it's just stupid, man. Um, also, Harry, man, uh, so let's go into the bad. So, yeah, MJ continues to be a one-dimensional, just basically maid-hopping damsel in distress. She's always in trouble. She's always screaming at the top of her lungs. I just don't give a crap about her. MJ is such a stupid character. Harry is even worse this time. Somehow, he's, James Franco is just ten times more awkward in this movie. I have no idea why. He's basically the CEO now, and it's just not natural feeling at all. It happened entirely off screen. I don't buy it. It's just weird. He was super awkward. Wasn't a fan of Harry in this movie either. I like where they're going with it, um, especially like the final scene of Harry. I do like where they're going to it, and they're building up to something big, I can tell. But just in general, he's a bad friend, and yeah, there's just not a lot to him, not a lot of purpose to him right now. So yeah, Harry sucked, um, MJ sucked. Even Aunt May was kind of a wild card. I wasn't a huge fan of Aunt May. Either she was played for a quick joke, or was supposed to be super serious and awkward, like when she just walks up the stairs without saying anything. And then the next time you, uh, they talk to each other, it's like, oh, it's water. Another bridge or over the dam, whatever you want to say. So Aunt May was all over the place for me. Very weird. Um, yeah, there's a lot. I, I mean, it's still super soap opery. It still feels like, yeah, I know it's a comic book movie, but it really feels like I'm re watching a comic book, which is, I don't know. When I've watched the MCU, stuff like Infinity War and Endgame is miles ahead of uh, movies like these. I don't think these even come close. I think today's standards really make these look really bad in comparison. Um, it just feels so fake sometimes. Um, the special effects are good in general, but uh, man, it's just, they got to tone it down with the jokes just a little bit. I felt this movie was tonally all over the place. Sometimes it's like cracking dumb jokes and then the next it's like super serious and emotional. It's like, you know, just pick one, just pick one or the other, or like, I don't know how the formula is, but the Russo brothers in particular are super excellent at switching the tones when need be. Um, but this one just felt really jarring, and yeah. I don't know why Spider-Man, I don't know why the Sam Raimi trilogy is so praised as it is. So far, I've only seen Mediocrity, and I've heard Spider-Man 3 is the worst of the three. Um, but honestly, from what I've seen, I have a feeling I might like Spider-Man 3 the most. I've never seen it. But I've seen some of the fight scenes with Sandman and stuff, and that that's, that looks pretty cool. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to give Spider-Man 2 a 2.5 out of 5 stars. That is 0.5 higher than the last movie, but I still think it's painfully mediocre. I would still watch this one again. I think it has some value to it. I think the fight scenes are pretty good. But, uh, yeah, just not a lot happening, I guess, in the entire thing. And I don't really know what... I don't really know what the consequences of everyone's actions are exactly because they're not exactly explained. It's like, it's just like a little doom ball thing and it's like, are the AI, is the AI forcing him to make the doom ball or did he already make the doom ball already? And it's like, you know, I don't know. I just prefer villains that are explained. That's just how personally I prefer. Some people don't care about that at all, but personally I do. So yeah, I could still kind of recommend this movie to you. Obviously lots of people love it. It's just not for me. So yeah, that's just my opinion. I'm sorry. Probably the second most unpopular opinion I have on my channel. 
after Spider-Man 1 only getting 2 out of 5 stars, which I feel harsh about, but I feel true. Because I just didn't think, I don't think either of these movies were anything amazing. But I did really enjoy the climax, and I thought the fight scenes were good, so it's got that. 2.5 out of 5 stars. Thank you for watching.